Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews, where today we're checking out a 53 foot Huckins Atlantic that is currently for sale. If you were to ask Huckins to make this brand new, you'd be looking at a price tag in the region of $3.5 million. I've featured a similar sized Huckins on this channel for just under $800,000, but this particular listing is for sale for $66,900. The boat recently benefited from over $450,000 in refurbishment, but sadly not long after that she actually ran aground in the intercoastal. When she went aground, one side of the port struck bearing got jammed up into the hull, and when the tide came back in, unfortunately the boat got flooded. And this one's for sale through Huckins Yachts, and the benefit of that is it's lying in their yard, so there's nobody in the world to be better equipped for carrying out the full rebuild that this one requires. And the main work items that's needing carried out is the engines need to be replaced, you need to replace the generator, the boat needs full rewiring, all the soft furnishings need to be replaced, the galley appliances, and then any navigation equipment that you want to have on board. But as we jump on board and walk around, you can see that structurally this one is still a very good example of the classic Huckins design. I love the wide decks, I love the wood finish. This one actually has guardrails around the outside, which not all of them have, but I prefer it this way. It feels more safe and secure. And this one was upgraded to include a Lumar capstan. It's got a 3 8 chain, and it's got 150 feet of stainless steel chain included. On the bow we've also got spacious seating, and there's storage underneath these seats. You get an access hatch down to the forward cabin, which also doubles up as ventilation. And then when I pan the camera around, you'll see that timeless Huckins design. And the front windows that you see here at the lower level, those have actually got screen covers on those that are easily removable if you preferred. And then again, as we make our way down, this time through the starboard side, you get a good sign of how clear that passageway is, leading all the way to the stern. And again, I love the fact that it's handhold to both sides. And it would definitely be easy to go from bow to stern whenever the boat's underway compared to some other boats that's on the market. And the owner recently upgraded the canopy covers, and this includes the eyes and glass screens, and these have all remained intact even after the incident that the boat went through. And there's definitely a lot of potential left in the old girl yet, which is why she wasn't immediately scrapped. And one other feature of Huckins is the engines are located in the aft cockpit, so although the engines and generator need replaced, they're far more accessible than most boats of this size. As a guide, this one is equipped with Caterpillar 375 horse with twin disc transmissions. But all the underwater components are still in good shape. The shafts, the rudders, the struts, the props, and even the Huckins V-Drive, they're all in good shape and can be used if you wanted to. Up to a maximum of 425 horse each. Now on a good day when this boat's fully restored and ship shape ready to go, you can see the amount of deck space we've got here in the aft cockpit. This is ideal if you want to go offshore fishing. Many of these boats have also been used for diving, but there's also plenty of space out here if you wanted to put out some chairs and perhaps a table, and cruise with plenty of comfort and style. And if I pop the camera down into the engine room, I know most of this equipment is going to have to be replaced, but I just wanted to give everybody an indication of how much space was down here, and how it was currently configured as a guide. And I personally like how accessible all the main components are for all your day-to-day -day maintenance and service checks. I always feel like the easier it is to maintain an engine, the more likelihood the maintenance will be continued. And when you've got an engine compartment that you barely crawl into, I always worry that maintenance wouldn't be kept up with the same. And obviously since the engine hatches are here and everything's more accessible, that's also going to reduce your labour rate substantially compared to some of the other boats of this size. And speaking of size, this one measures 53 foot in length, she's got a beam of 15 foot 1. And she's got a maximum draft of 3 foot 6 inches. So we make our way into the bridge deck. I love the near 360 degree visibility you get from the lower helm. You can see we've got rod holders overhead. And I like this outdoor saloon area. If you wanted to in the right weather, you could roll up those eyes and glass canopy covers. Get plenty of fresh air. But also you've got the option of keeping it fully enclosed, whichever suits best. And again, there's storage underneath all these seats. And we also have door access on both the port and starboard side, which is really beneficial when it comes to berthing the boat and the marina as well. Moving forward to the helm, we've got three seats here, so you can always keep your family and friends close by. There was actually a fridge underneath here, 
obviously that would need to get replaced. And you can start to see here the quality of the wood finish. Just as an example, it was part of the refit, this one benefited from $55,000 worth of teak and holly sold. The vast majority of the woodwork that you see throughout this yacht is still in first class condition. I like the fact that the three seats at the helm, they've got independent footrests. You get that classic opening centre window at the helm. And at best, the instrumentation here you see would need to be rewired, but more than likely most of this would need to be replaced. And then obviously the navigation equipment that you want to have for cruising and offshore fishing, you need to include that as well. On a boat of this design, I personally would try and salvage as much of the classic switches and gauges as possible, but that's more than just a personal preference. And then as we make our way around, I'll take you down into the lower accommodation. And I like the fact that the door that leads down into the lower accommodation has got like a mesh screen on it. So that way you've still got plenty of ventilation coming in and out. And that way you can avoid that damp, musty smell and keep the fresh air flowing. Now at face value, other than the soft cushions needing to be replaced, it's hard to imagine that this one has actually been flooded and needs as much work as it does. The woodwork is still in excellent condition. The boat appears at face value to be structurally sound. I love the big windows that's on this one. There's plenty of light coming in. Sometimes when you go down below in a boat you feel claustrophobic, but you never feel that way on this one. Now Hawkins have actually got a window AC unit in here, and that's just to keep the ventilation going, so you don't need to worry about mould or anything like that. You can see all the storage compartments underneath those seats. There's so much storage space and accommodation on this one. The one possible option you could have is not replace the engines, and just use this as a static houseboat or even an Airbnb. Between the galley and a saloon down here, you're looking at 16 foot in length and well over 6 foot headroom because I don't have any issues walking around here. And then on the starboard side, on these access panels, this is where you'll find the main switch panels, circuit breakers and the electrics on board. Now obviously this all needs to be rewired considering the water damage that she's had. But again, I just like that classic feel to it. I would try and keep as much of this if I could, if it was my boat that was redoing. Something about classic cars and classic boats. Got to have that character appeal to it and not just fit and functionality. And when everything was fully functional, I liked the fact that it was clearly labelled and identified so that it was easy for anyone on board to use. And if I take you down into the galley, as much as most of these appliances need to be replaced, it still gives you an indication of what's possible from this galley. This one did have the full height fridge freezer. There's a ton of worktop space on the port hand side. There's also a lot of drawers and storage cabinets for not only your cooking appliances but also for any dry storage, canned goods, things like that. You see we've also got the four burner cooker and this did have the oven down below. And there's so much space in this galley I just can't help but think that this would be a great liveaboard cruiser. You certainly wouldn't be in a rush to come back in if you do want to go offshore fishing for any length of time. And then from the galley you can lead forward and this will take you to the guest stateroom. And again at face value structurally I never saw any issues in this cabin. Obviously the soft furnishings would need to be replaced. But I love the headroom that was in this cabin, especially as you get closer to the bow. You don't normally get that. There's drawers and lockers underneath both berths. There's several hatches and portholes overhead. That way you get plenty of light and ventilation coming in. There's also an access panel at the very front bulkhead. That leads into the anchor locker if you ever needed to inspect or replace the chain. And I like the way that the hatch overhead has got that screen effect to it too. So that way you can open it and get ventilation but not have to worry about all the bugs coming in. And then this master stateroom, it's actually an ensuite sweet stateroom. There is a hedge compartment in here. And in the hedge compartment you'll find that we've got a separate shower stall. You've got the toilet, you've got the sink, but you've also got plenty of storage space for your toiletries and personal belongings. I should point out that this boat was equipped with 500 gallon fuel capacity, 200 gallon fresh water capacity and approximately 100 gallon holding tank capacity. And then finally before we leave this stateroom, I also wanted to show you the hanging locker space that we have in here. 
which is perfect for either liveaboard or extended cruising purposes. And then I'll take you back up through the galley and also through the main saloon and I'll take you to the master stateroom on board. But again as we head through, pay a close attention to the deck that's on here. I just personally love the woodwork finish that's on this one. It's hard to imagine that this one was actually flooded. And this boat's actually got three heads compartments. And at the bottom of the steps is where you'll find basically the day head. And again, you'll find that toilet, sink. And there's plenty of storage here for toiletries and personal belongings. And then if we head aft again, this will lead you into the owner's stateroom. And one design feature I like of this stateroom is the fact that this actually has access straight out to the aft cockpit. And this stateroom's got a ton of storage space, there's drawers and lockers everywhere. You'll find that she's got split twin berths on both port and starboard side. We've got porthole hatches on both sides as well for natural light and ventilation. And I was impressed with how dry the bilges are on this one. The hull was patched at the Hinkley Yard in Savannah before the boat was towed down to Jacksonville, to the Huckins Yard. And in face value the hull appears to be very much watertight. And this stateroom does have its own ensuite compartment. And again, you'll find the toilet, the sink, space for toiletries and personal belongings. And then this has got a separate walk in shower behind the door with plenty of headroom and room to actually access and enjoy that shower. And then one other area I want to show you on this one before we wrap up the video, and that is that this one is equipped with a flybridge. And with the mast lowered, she's got a maximum bridge clearance of 15 foot 2 inch. So technically she is capable of doing a great loop, if that's something of interest to you. And I love the central location of the helm on the flybridge. You get great visibility when it comes to docking and close quarter manoeuvring. But you've also got great visibility over the stern. So if you are offshore and into the big game fishing, you can do everything you can to help the crew down below land that catch. And the flybridge does have a bimini canopy cover that way everybody up here gets plenty of shade and protection if you wanted but you can easily fold it down when it's not needed and again for that classic character effect of the boat i love the chrome work that was up here from the searchlight to the fog horns and if it was me carrying out this project i personally would try and repair those when it comes to the rewiring rather than just simply replacing them as you can imagine, this is a very rare and unique opportunity to purchase the Huckins of this size design, and especially for this price. And as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on this one. If you could leave a comment down below, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like and subscribe button. It really does make a difference. And as always, I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.